All right, welcome to Sewing Circle. Um, today's Tuesday tutorial, and I'm going to start something new-ish. <laughs> I thought that for the next couple weeks for our tutorial, I would show you how to make just a simple gift that you could give as a Christmas gift. Um, maybe if you have an office gift exchange or, um, well, I guess there aren't too many of those right now, but anyway. Just some simple gifts that are easy to make. Even if you're advanced at sewing, maybe this will spark your ideas and um, get you going on your Christmas giving. So um, before I get started, I am live on both Instagram and Facebook again today. So I'm trying to get this down to a science, but it might take a while. Please be patient. I'm noticing that looking on my devices, Instagram looks fine. Facebook looks way overexposed and I have no idea how to fix that, but um, I'll keep working on that. If you have any ideas, please leave them in the comments because I'm trying to get better at this. Anyway, back to the Christmas gifts. This week we are going to do a rice bag. And if you don't know what a rice bag is, or maybe you have a different name for it, it's just a little flannel bag filled with rice. You stick it in the microwave for one and a half, maybe two minutes. Two minutes might get too hot depending on your microwave. Pull it out and you have a warm heating pad. Um, I found out about these when I had my second child. Someone gave it to me as a baby shower gift and I was able to use it, or she put in the card to use it when you're nursing, late night feedings, if a baby's chilly, put it against him, if the baby's colicky put it against their stomach, and we have had rice bags in our home ever since. Um, and I've given them as gifts as well. My kids loved them when it was cold or when they were sick, when they were in pain, it can make a nice warm compress. Just a lot of things you can do with a rice bag. Super simple. Um, I've even thrown them together when someone was at my house and needed something you know, warm for whatever reason. So um, really easy to make, so let's get started. Uh, first of all, if you saw my post yesterday, we need two pieces of flannel. 100% cotton is best if you can find it. But flannel, just because it's nice, warm, soft, makes you feel like, you know, warm, fuzzy, which is what the rice bag should be. So two pieces cut to 10 inches, by seven inches is what I do. Really, you could do them any shape you wanted. I've seen them done in a long tube so that people can wrap them around their neck for a neck compress. Um, so really any size you want. But what we're working on today is 10 inches by seven inches. And so you put the two pieces together with the right sides together and the wrong sides out. And we're just gonna make a simple bag, really. This is truly just a bag full of rice. Um, and we're going to sew around three of the edges to make this bag. And so I do for this a half inch seam. It's a strong seam. It's an easy seam width to work with. And if you've cut it 10 by seven, then when you're done, you have a nine by six, basically inch bag of rice. So let's get started. I'm going to start at this top corner. So turn it each corner and come back and I'm going to tie off at each end just for some strength here and you'll see why when we start to fill the bag. So again half inch seam width and I like to use a 3.5 stitch length for almost everything I do. Certainly everything on just regular fabric like this. So 3.5 maybe 3 inch seam length. Um, it's really kind of up to you. Also, we want to start right at the very edge, at this edge of the fabric. Don't start down in here. It'll make things a little more complicated when we turn the top. So I'm starting right at the very edge. And need my trusty glasses for this. I always start sewing, holding the two threads. I don't know if you can see that, especially with the exposure on the Facebook one but I'm holding my two thread ends for about the first three stitches. Reverse. And then we're just gonna sew down each side. If you want to pin this, if you feel more comfortable with pins, that's certainly fine. I'm not big on pinning and this flannel won't slip very much. 
so you're okay without it, but if you feel better with it, go ahead and pin. I'm going to stop at the corner. I always set my machine to have the needle down so that when I turn the, the needles in the fabric and it pivots perfectly. But I'm going to show you a little hat here. I'll turn off my needle down option. If you don't have a needle down option on your machine and it, you stop and the needle's not in the fabric, just turn your hand wheel towards you until the needle's down in the fabric, really. The, oh, I need to do one more stitch. The needle down feature is really just a matter of convenience, not a matter of necessity, but I do like to use it because I have it. So we turned the corners and came all the way back to the top edge. And I'm hoping that you can see my seam comes all the way, whoops, I gotta come this way, all the way to the top on here. I'm trying to get it on both cameras. That's why I'm moving around a lot. And I went all the way down, around, and back up to this top edge. Okay, now I want to show you my trick for turning a nice crisp corner. I'm going to take and trim off some of this fabric in either direction, just maybe an inch, inch and a half past the corner and trim it down to maybe, not quite a quarter of an inch, maybe a quarter of an inch. And I'm gonna do that. You can see I started here and just shaved off a little bit. I'm going to do that on my other corner as well. And I do this if I'm making pillows, if I'm anything that's going to be turned. This gets rid of some of the bulk in the corner so that you don't have a thick lumpy corner and you can get a crisper point. So there again, I've trimmed off, oops, get that on there, sorry, trimmed off both of my corners. Hopefully you can see what I've done there. Okay, next trick, I'm going to stick my thumb inside the bag. The rest of my fingers are out here and I'm going to get my thumb into that corner. Can you see that? My thumb is in the corner. Now I'm going to fold this side down and I'm going to fold this side over exactly, sorry, exactly on the seam. Hopefully you can see that. Again, I'm trying to show it on two different cameras. So if you can see, I folded it exactly at the seams so that I've got that corner right here. My thumb is inside and my finger is on the outside of the point. And then I'm going to turn it like that. And as you can see, uh, I've got a pretty sharp corner there. Let me turn the other one and then I'll show you how you finish it off. So again, my thumb is inside the project. I'm going to fold along this seam and then I'm going to fold along this seam so that my thumb and my finger are right at the point turn and use that finger to push the point out. And you can see, if I get back here, I really don't have bulky corners at all. There's not much fabric in there because I got rid of so much bulk from there. Now, if you're still not happy with how crisp these are, you can take a tool. I have a tool like this. I'm going to use this point you could use the point of a pen or a pen cap. This one might not be quite pointed enough, um, but you get what I'm saying. And you would stick it inside and just give that point another little push. And there you have a nice crisp corners for your bag. So pretty simple so far. I hope everybody is following along. 
next step is to fill our bag with rice. And so I have here, this is actually a base. You could use a tall glass, anything with a top small enough that your, you know, your top's got to be able to turn inside out over that. So let's see, so that we can see this. Maybe if I put it here, I'm going to put the bag inside and turn the top open like that. Okay. And then I have my rice here. This is two, a two cup measure. Obviously I have more than two cups. One and a half to two cups is plenty of rice for a bag this size. If you want a bigger bag, obviously you need more rice, a smaller bag, less rice. But for this size, you want to kind of gauge your rice so that you don't cook half of it while you're still trying to heat the rest of it. Um, so I'm just going to start pouring this in. Boop. And you could use a funnel too. I forgot to grab one. So I'm going to have some rice to vacuum up after this. And just fill up that bag. About well, more than half full, maybe more like two thirds full. This is where the rice comes to in my finished bag, if that gives you an idea. So fill that up, get the extra pieces that dropped, and then pull your rice bag out and see how you're doing. I don't have quite enough in here, it's down here. So I'm going to add just a little bit more. I'm putting it back inside the glass jar so that I can keep that top open. Otherwise the fabric just works against you trying to get the rice in. So I'm ending up putting that full, the full measuring cup in. That was probably close to two and a quarter, two and three eighths cups of dry rice. Okay, pull your bag out, and now I've got enough rice in my bag. At this point, if you wanted to, you could add any essential oils that you wanted or scents, um, as long as they are heat tolerant. Um, lots of people will use lavender, sleepy, or calming oils. I will say that after a while, excuse me, after a while, some of those scents do lose their potency, but for a gift and at the beginning, it's a lot of fun to have a bag that smells really good. All right, our kind of final step, at least to finish our bag, is to turn this top raw edge inside a half an inch. Now you could press it if you want, but flannel is such a forgiving fabric that I'm able to just take it and turn it and I grab it here at the seam so that I get those seam allowances out of the way and turn it in a half an inch. Now if you can see this is no longer a raw edge. I've turned it in and if you look in there I've turned it in a half an inch which is about the same as my seam allowances that I used around here. At this point, I do pin because this doesn't like to lay as easily and as flat as the other seam did. So I use about three pins just to hold it. Oop, and dropping pins is never good, especially if you're in bare feet or socks. Three pins across the top should be enough. If you feel like more will hold it better for you, that's fine. But there's my three pins. And as you pin it, you want to make sure that these edges are exactly even. Because now we're going to go and stitch about an eighth of an inch from the edge the whole way across. And if your edges are not matched up perfectly, you might miss underneath where you can't see the fabric. So make sure you have those perfectly together. And now we're going to stitch an eighth of an inch from the edge across the top. 
I'm still using my 3.5 stitch length. And as you can see, I hope, I'm letting the rice fall off here. I have just enough fabric here to clear so that that sits well. If you don't, different machines have different size tables. You may need to put something underneath it and prop it up so that it lays flat. Otherwise, hanging down could work against you, but it's not on my particular machine. But just keep that in mind. And again, starting at the very edge of the fabric, holding on to these two threads at the end. Remember to tie it off or reverse at each end and pull out your pins as you go. It's just not worth the risk of sewing over pins unless you absolutely have to, but your presser foot, once the pin gets under the presser foot, your presser foot should hold it in place. Now I just had to do a little adjusting there. My edges got off and I was afraid that I might miss what's underneath. So just stop to check and then keep going. Reverse when you get to the other end. And you have a rice bed. And that's it. You can see the rice stays inside now. We have a full, basically like a pillow now, full of rice. And so this would make a perfectly cute gift. Um, the first one that I ever got was just like this, no frills. Um, but anyway, this works just fine. Um, if you want to, because this is a gift or just for fun, you can see with this one, I added some trim across the top. And so I'm going to show you how to do that with this one. I have just the same thing, just some pom-pom trim. I am going to cut off this first pom-pom at either end. And that is so that I can fold some of the tape underneath. So if you can see here, <laughs> I've cut off that last pom-pom on each end. You're going to want to fold that end underneath so that you catch it when you come to sew across it. And put that on. Again, you'll probably want to pin with this. And because this is so narrow, you're going to see me put my pins the opposite direction than you normally would. Can you see? Oh. You can see the pin right there that it's going parallel to the seam instead of perpendicular. That's on purpose because this trim is so narrow. And so I'm going to lay that right on top of that eighth inch seam that I just made. And when I get to the other end, I'm going to fold in the end and pin it in place as well. And then I'm going to put one pin in the center just to hold it in place for me. So all three of my pins are parallel to my seam instead of perpendicular. That's okay for what we're doing right now. However, as you sew, you want to make sure that the pointed end points into the machine so that you can grab the ball and pull it out as you go. And so I'm going to sew down the center of that tape on the trim about an eighth of an inch right on top of the other stitching. Now I can pull out my first pin and because it was pointing with the ball towards me, I was able to pull it out smoothly. Reverse a little bit. And then start going in. Again. Whoops. Hmm. I think somebody is making toast downstairs. One second. Okay. 
Our toaster sits right under our downstairs smoke detector, and when one goes off, they all go off. I'm very sorry. Live TV, folks. Anyway, so I'm stitching along the tape about an eighth of an inch from the edge right on top of my other stitching. And I can pull the pins out as I come to them. And that's it. Now we have a fun trim on our rice bag. So that's really all there is to it. It's all straight sewing. Something that you know anyone from beginner to advanced can make. People are so impressed when you've handmade their Christmas gifts and they know that you've made them with some love. You've put a little piece of yourself into it. And so um, hopefully you can make some of your Christmas crafts this year for, or Christmas gifts this year. One other thing I want to show you really quick before we go, you can see this piece is also 10 inches by seven inches, but I have pinked the edges with pinking shears, which look like this. You've probably seen them. They make them for scrapbooking. These are specifically for fabric. So I pinked the edges. The way I came up with this, my daughter wanted to make these when she was in second grade. And so all we did was pink them. She just sewed the three sides like we did. We filled it up with the rice and then all she had to do was sew straight across here and she gave them to her friends for Christmas and they had this nice pinked edge so they wouldn't fray. She didn't have to learn to turn seams because her hands were still a little small for that at the time. Um, but that is certainly an option if you would like to. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Tune back in with me next Tuesday at two o'clock and uh, we will be making our next thing, which will be some Christmas pillowcases. So hope you enjoyed it and have a great afternoon.